the formidable robot. If you see the creepy pastas title, you thought this would be your generic cringe-worthy spin pasta story with overused subjects and sometimes out of bound crossovers and shit. Nope, this was rather a spin pasta that was lost and forgotten about. From what I could tell, it's one of those Teletubbies lost episode creepy pastas that would follow a format similar to the ones you see on the spin pasta wiki. They even did this with other kids' shows, like Yo Gabba Gabba, Little Einsteins, Higley Town Heroes, Wonder Pets, and the list goes on. Don't get me started on the lost THX text trailers because that trend on the site is over and done with, thank god. Anywho, let's get on with this story. The story was called, Teletubbies, The Cenobites. Yep, it's those Teletubbies lost episode stories where it was based on a movie, TV show or video game until things go apeshit, and this one is about a horror movie of all things. The story's episode was based on the 1987 horror film, Hellraiser. The spin pasta was written by Penfold the Pasta Writer 1981 back in October of 2022. If you check the author's profile, and based on the username, you can see that the profile picture was penfold from the original 1981 UK animated series Danger Mouse, practically a frame from the episode The Odd Ball Runaround, where penfold holds a boomerang with a rugby ball on the ground, or football as it's called in the US. Anyways, the story that this penfold user wrote is not very good, and that's when shit goes downhill. This was thankfully told from the perspective of an average real-life person and not a cartoon or video game character, like with most fanfic-riddled lost episode spin pastas. It starts with the protagonist talking about his fucked up experience with a lost Teletubbies episode and blah blah blah, until he gets on with the story about said episode. He talks about how he went to a movie theater with his siblings to watch the Bob's Burgers movie or whatever animated film that was new at the time that this offer popped out of his head before he came across an unmarked box. You know, typical lost and found stuff. As the protagonist opens the box, it reveals that it's a Teletubbies DVD, specifically your ex and other stories kind of DVD. The offer would then explain the cover of the DVD as always. In this image, the DVD cover looks shoddily made, as if it was edited either in Photoshop or Paint.net. From what the offer describes, it consisted of the main Teletubbies cast, with Tinky Winky being up close to the cover, standing in front of what looks to be a brownish hellish landscape with a creepily deformed tree, which was for some reason taken from Google Images or something. It had the Teletubbies logo on the top center of the cover, along with white text in the bubble one font at the bottom of it that said, Shadows and Other Stories. It had the black 1997-2021 BBC logo at the top left, and the BBFC UC, Universal Children, certificate at the bottom left. After discussing the DVD cover, the protagonist lists off three normal episodes from the show contained in this compilation DVD, including one that is not shown to the public, from what the offer describes. Shadows, Naughty Cloud, My Mom's a Doctor, you named it, and the lost episode, The Cenobites. After that, the protagonist and his siblings go back home, he goes into his room alone, and puts the disc into his VHS DVD combo player connected to his LG TV, or telly as the offer called it since he's from the UK as I, the main writer of this post, was. As the DVD started, it begins with the usual 1997-2009 BBC video logo, and then to the main menu. Like the DVD cover, the main menu looks like utter crap. From what it said in the story, the image of the menu consisted of the Teletubbies on a red vaporwave looking background taken again from Google Images, with a crimson sky, flat low poly 3D hills, and a red sun that could be either during sunrise or sunset. It had four buttons in the perspective colors of the cast, play, episode selection, subtitles, and BBC web link, almost as if it was made with Microsoft PowerPoint. After talking about the menu, the offer presses play with the remote, sits back, and discusses how the first three episodes were good and that the last one is downright disturbing, the works. 
Like most lost episode spin pastas, a message displays before the episode plays, telling the viewer that this episode was made to promote the horror movie Hellraiser, despite that the movie came out 10 years before Teletubbies was greenlit, says it contains extremely gory violence and not suitable for children, you best it. The episode starts with the normal Teletubbies theme song until, like most Teletubbies creepypastas on this site, the speaker that always says where have the Teletubbies gone said something different, something along the lines of, hell is empty and all the devils are here, despite that what the offer said, hell wasn't a suitable word for a preschool show. After that, it shows the field of Teletubby land, but with the puzzle box on the grass, the one seen from the film, until Tinky Winky appears and approaches it, which can be seen in this shoddily edited screenshot. The frame was taken from the episode Fancy Dress in VHS quality, which showed Tinky Winky coming across a crown on the ground, except the crown was replaced with the Hellraiser puzzle box at a different angle, which is yet another Google image. As Tinky Winky takes the box and keeps it with him, the magic windmill begins spinning, readying for the TV event in the show like always. For some strange reason, Tinky Winky was chosen for the event, which plays a disturbing video. In this image, what was shown on Tinky Winky's tummy vision was a VHS recording of a burning warehouse at night. The offer says that in the video, the voice of a man screaming could be heard while flames took over the warehouse, along with a group of figures in dark cloaks watching the inferno in amusement, chanting some sort of satanic ritual. It goes on for about two minutes until the TV event concludes. The Teletubbies do their usual antics, addressing the puzzle box that Tinky Winky found until the magical event came. The sky turns red, which is that annoying trope sometimes used in these creepypasta spin pasta stories, and then comes Pinhead from Hellraiser, pins all over his head and all, and approaches Tinky Winky holding the puzzle box, which was depicted in this image. The edited screenshot of Tinky Winky holding his iconic red handbag was taken from a random episode, but the handbag was replaced with the same image of the puzzle box from before. Next to Tinky Winky was an edited image of Pinhead, once again taken from Google Images. I forgot to mention that the puzzle box was bigger compared to the original one from the movie, which is smaller. As the story goes on, more monsters from the Cenobites group appear, Chatterer, Deep Throat, Butterball, and so on. As the author of this story said, that's when shit gets the fan. The Cenobites began to torture the Teletubbies in disturbing bloody ways imaginable. Poe gets sliced in half by a giant buzzsaw, Lala gets decapitated by chains, Dipsy gets hooks all over his body and torn apart, and lastly, Tinky Winky gets burned alive in a circle of fire. The writer discusses that Tinky Winky's screaming wasn't the voice actor, Mark Enohan, but was replaced with the disturbing female scream sound from Slendy Tubbies and Shed 17, which is that god-awful sound ideas scream that YouTubers used all the damn time, dubbed Deranged Woman Scream. But what makes the story more interesting is the last screenshot. The close-up image of Tinky Winky's burnt face looks freaky. When I say freaky, I mean it looks genuinely horrifying. There was some fire in the background, probably done with a texture generator, and the edited image of Tinky Winky had his face replaced with a traced-over picture of a burnt face that resembles a skull. Compared to the crappily made screenshots in this story, this one looked almost well made. As the Cenobites finish murdering the Teletubbies, it cuts to the Sun Baby, and again, like in those Teletubbies lost episodes, it begins to genuinely cry. While the episode is reaching its end, not even showing the Tubby Bye Bye speaker, the Cenobites begin to burn down the Teletubbies house and the entire land, and Pinhead warns the viewer that if they find this puzzle box somewhere, he and his army will tear your soul apart. The credits showed the shot of the burning Teletubby land and only that shot, not even showing the sun baby beginning to set, and then lastly cuts to the edited burnt version of the ragdoll and BBC logos, with the ragdoll smiley being replaced with a skull, something like that. After that, it shows the disturbingly edited version of the 1997-2009 BBC video logo from before, with it being slower, pitched down and demonic, typical creepypasta material. 
As the protagonist finishes watching the episode, he begins to feel dread and fear down his spine, shows the DVD to his family and replays the episode for them, with the mother happening to contact BBC about the episode and burn the disc in a fireplace until it's nothing but ash, and the offer starting to have a nightmare about the Cenobites killing him and his family, you get the gist. The offer tells us not to find any lost episode of Teletubbies with disturbing content, especially the puzzle box from the Hellraiser franchise. You know, just your average lost episode creepypasta spin pasta. Since this story was published, a comment was made by a user called Kimberly Kitty 2 k 7 and her profile picture was a frame of Gia the Jaguar from the 2012 DreamWorks film sequel Madagascar 3 Europe's Most Wanted, where she confronts Alex the Lion in agreeing with her about the circus. The comment read as follows. Guys, this story is written by a serial killer. What I saw on the news is true. Ever since I read that comment, I had to look that up, and, there it was. A BBC News article about a murder and arson that took place at an old warehouse in Manchester. It describes a group of serial killer cultists dedicated to sacrificing people to Satan. They burned a 32-year-old man alive, the man's name was Timothy Winkbuckle, who went missing for an entire week, and the fire engulfed the warehouse with the cultists watching in awe and chanting. I knew it. They were the ones responsible for running the Penfold account and writing such a generic lost episode crossover spin pasta, and the face of the burnt man's corpse was a reference for the Tinky Winky image. I might have the urge to vomit just because of how the story based on a deranged incident was made. Two months later, the story was deleted by the site admins, and Penfold the Pasta Writer 1981, despite being inactive, was blocked entirely from the wiki. Penfold's fandom account suddenly gets deleted two days after the blocking. After the story's existence was vanquished from the internet, the whereabouts of the killers remained unknown. To end this post, I might have something else to say. How on God's green earth would a bloody serial killer write a lost episode creepypasta this bad?